Let's get my next guest out. He's one of my favourite comedians. He's a brilliant actor as well. It is the one and only Mr. Steve Coogan. Come on out, Steve. <laughs> Coga. Great to have you here, Steve. So, listen, I, I hope you don't feel left out that we didn't invite you into the race. Well, there. I did. I ran a marathon a year ago, you know. And no, I, did you really? Oh, yeah, I did four hours, 45 seconds. Is so. that good? I don't know if that's good or not. It's not slow, but it's not that okay. fast either. But on a sprint like that, an older fellow like you, you wouldn't keep up with those two youngsters. Uh, well, no. <laughs> You know, I think people, when they think of Steve Coogan, still they think primarily of you as a comic actor. Uh, but you're broadening out, certainly. This new movie, it shows you in a new light. You're, it's a, it's a, a media role than the ones we've seen you in the past. That's another way of, another way of saying it's not very funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny at times, but it's not meant to be funny. No, all the it's way not. Through, no, it's, it's a drama. I mean, it's a drama with funny bits. So the film's called Look of Love, and you're playing Paul... Is it Paul Raymond or Paul Raymond? It's Paul Raymond or Raymond, whatever. He was the man who basically transformed Soho and introduced the notion of nudity to London and strip clubs and what was most famous, the Raymond Review Bar, uh, at a time when, the, you know, the, the, when naked women didn't really exist yeah. um, uh, in terms of, like, being able to look at them. Um, and he made himself into one of the richest men in the country in the process, didn't he? Well, he did. I mean, he ended up... When he died, he owned most of Soho. And, in fact, still, his, his estate owns most of Soho. Wow. When, when Soho was... When Soho was a very seedy area, he bought up all the property, and that's a very trendy area, and, of course, it's worth a lot of money now. But people have changed a lot since the 70s. I mean, when you look back at the kind of... the magazines that Paul Raymond published... Uh, Which, of course, we grew up with. Yeah, and they were... our education. Uh, and they were very, very much appreciated at the time. But it's very different to the kind of things that people see now. And they no, look... I mean, Looking back at the sorts of thing that people regard as, as porn... Well, there's a look, cover of one of them from the 70s, it, and that's... It, yeah, it, it sort of... It looks actually a bit almost uh, quaint compared with what you can get access to these days. Um, and, of course, all, all the women had to, uh, in the scenes with me, had to wear what they call merkins, which are pubic wigs. <laughs> um, sort of uncomfortable, nervous laughter. <laughs> 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 so why were they wearing the... Is this for their modesty, or is this just to try and make them look more like... Well, it's sort of a bit of both, really. A bit for their modesty, so they could say that they weren't actually showing anything, but actually to be faithful to the period when, when they did actually wear those... Um, those they didn't uh, wear them, they grew them. They grew they grew, they grew, they grew them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Back in the so... days when women used to wear pubic hair <laughs> and then well, take it off and hang it up <laughs> by the side of the bed. Well, they might have done. Oh, you were around. Or you were a late starter, <laughs> Steve. <laughs> But they'd come, the, the glue would come undone sometimes and they'd start sort of, you know... They'd, they'd need... Re, they'd, someone would have to run in and sort of, like, glue it back on. You know? <laughs> so a bloke... And, of course, we were able to trim some off and use it as my moustache <laughs> in the form of you saw later on. <laughs> OK. Uh, it's set in the 60s and 70s. It comes up to, I guess, well, fairly close to the present day. Um, but um, uh, the, that period, it's very easy to romanticise it. And certainly when you see it on screen, it does look spectacular. Did you enjoy wearing the clothes? Did you like oh, the sets? Oh, totally. Do you know what? It's funny. In the 1980s, we used to have these parties where you dress up in 70s clothes and think they look ridiculous. But now I actually think they look rather cool. And I had these sort of set, these 70s suits where they had these big flared trousers and uh, gathered waists and big kipper ties. And, and uh, I thought, I think it's actually rather fetching. It's oddly fabric. Let's have a look. It suits you. You kind of, I think you look much better in those clothes than this thing you're wearing now, which is kind of, it's an odd kind of combination of brown Jeremy Clarkson boots with the... I think, I think there's pots and kettles going on okay, here. I won't even start that. Let's have a look. This is Steve in The Look of Love. There you go. The Look of Love, it opens on April the 26th. That's next Friday, I think. Uh, I think it'll do very well for you. I imagine it'll be a hit. Uh, Steve, do you miss doing Alan Partridge? He's uh, such an incredible character, such an incredible creation. Uh, the movie is coming out soon, so I know you're doing him again. And, but I get the feeling that he's something... You know, it, it is a defining role for you, isn't it? Mm. Alan's like a sort of a, a, a friend of mine, really, who I become now and again. And people say, oh, do you like doing... It's like a, a relative who you quite like to see now and again, but you don't want to live with. Yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> And uh, whenever I've done Alan, w w you know, when you work on doing the character quite a lot, I mean, because although Alan's funny, he is a bit, of, a bit annoying. And, I mean, it might be all right watching for half an hour, but imagine sitting in a room with him for three months. <laughs> that's what you have to do when you write it. So, yeah. so do you get, you get kind of sick of him by the end you of the period? You do get sick yeah. of him, because it's like being in a room with an idiot. <laughs> um, so, so, but, but then what you do is you, you leave him alone for a while, and then after a while you start to miss him. And I might walk down the street... And, actually, what was, what's quite odd is even on, on my own, I might walk down the street and look at uh, something in a shop window and mumble to myself as Alan what he might say about it, and then chuckle to myself quite <laughs> on my own. So I look like one of those mad people on the tube. <laughs>
<laughs> but, and that's when you start thinking, oh, it'd be quite nice to do him again. So the, the, the point is with Alan is uh, I only ever go back to doing him when I want to do him, not when yeah. other people want me to do him. And because of that, because we're not saturated people with him, then people are always pleased to see him. There's always an appetite for him. But you're not doing the, the catchphrase he had in his talk show when he had these, the, the series that with Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh, yeah, which I, do, I, still, I still get that. that I, we only ever said that in, the, in Knowing Me Knowing You about 18 years ago. Pe but people do still shout Aha. Uh -huh. Well, uh, when I spoke what, to you on the phone today, I accidentally, I didn't mean to, when he picked up the phone, I went Aha! Uh -huh, and I thought, yeah, oh, why did I do that? No, but the thing is, I, what I used to do was when people would shout it at me, I'd just ignore them and walk away. And then I thought, <laughs> no, I'm going to try the opposite. And someone started to shout Aha! Uh -huh, and I ran straight up to them and went Aha! Uh -huh! <laughs> <laughs> all right, OK, all right, maybe, you know. <laughs> That's the way to deal with it, yeah. that must be exhausting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you're dropping that catchphrase, he doesn't use that anymore? Or he, he, was, was he, he doesn't use it in the film, but, I yeah. mean, I, I, we do there's these sort of webisode things. I mean, it's not like, I mean, it's, not, it's just not in the film. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the Alan Partridge movie, this is a proper movie, it's a proper yeah. movie, it's going to be at cinemas, it's going to be out in August, I think, is what, yeah. you, what you're planning, mm -hmm. so you must have finished it, I guess. It's all finished. We're editing it right now. We're trying to get take out the unfunny bits and just keep the funny bits. That's always a good That's plan the with a comedy. Uh, <laughs> what's it called? It's called um, Alpha Papa. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you can, you can treat this experience <laughs> as market research if you want. How about Alan Partridge, it, the movie? Well, I wanted to call it uh, Alpha, Alan Partridge in Hectic Danger Day. <laughs> uh, which has got, got a titter, which is better than the utter silence. Well, I think Alpha, Alpha, Alpha Papa. Papa, everyone thought you were being, it was some sort of clever, <laughs> ironic joke. So I, Alpha Papa would be what if it was a code it, well, thing? Alpha Papa is uh, Alpha, you know the uh, police uh, alphabetic... Fox, sort of, Trot, Trot, Tango. Yeah, and things. all that sort of... Uh, Alpha, yeah. Papa. Alpha Papa is Alan's initials. In, I don't Can know, I be honest? I've got to be honest. It wasn't my idea. Okay. Okay. It's probably the worst <laughs> film title I've ever heard in my life, and I'm thrilled you've come on the show, and we've dealt with this early, to save you from the crushing disappointment if you were to release a film that you've laboured long and hard on called Alpha Bloody Papa, and no-one goes to see There's it. There's no bloody in it. <laughs> What's the story? What's the plot? How much um, can you say? Well, Alan is in Norwich and he's DJing on his on North Norfolk Digital. <laughs> but a big horrible company called Gordale Media, a bit like News International, <laughs> uh, comes along to take over the radio station and rob it of all its personality and and change it to uh, from North Norfolk Digital to Shape. Yeah. And and there, lots of people get sacked and it all goes and basically uh, uh, to cut a long story short, it ends up in. Uh, there's a big siege at a radio station right. with all the world's media to send on it and Alan is at the centre of it as a kind of the negotiator between the, uh, the, the old and the new. The gunman and the police outside. And it's... Uh, I'm really looking forward to the Partridge movie and I'm hoping, and I'm sure it will, that uh, Look of Love will be a big hit for you. Because I imagine, is that where you want to go more, more into straight acting? I know it's a comedy as well, but, you know, it's a, it's a bigger role. I like to do a bit of everything, Jonathan, as well, you know. Uh, it's great to see you again. Nice to see uh, you. And I'm thrilled you did so well. I'm thrilled there's more parties coming as well. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Steve Coogan. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you.